Hi, my name is Terry Tamlin, and this is my thesis proposal presentation for the Applied Behavior Analysis Master's Degree. Um, my proposal is on the effects of choice on multiplication and division skill acquisition for third grade students. The number of students with maladaptive behaviors have been increasing and the students with the most pronounced behavioral needs are the ones that are often missing the most instruction. Because of this, behavior management plans are often used to increase that instruction time. However, those plans often include punishment procedures, and because they're using punishment procedures, those are not teaching new or alternative behaviors. Um, because of this, um, educational agencies have come up with a tiered system of intervention. Um, that tiered system has three levels. There's the primary tier, tier one, the secondary tier, tier two, and the tertiary tier, which is tier three. Um, the tier one, or the primary tier, is looked at as universal interventions that are logical, they're antecedent-based, and they're geared towards the total population. The tier two um, or the secondary level of interventions are interventions for those who have been identified for at, being at risk for some reason. And the tier three or the tertiary um, are interventions for those who are failing to develop or to improve. Um, and this is a more intense level of intervention and it includes formal procedures with individual assessments, support plans, um, management that's put together by a team um, that's there to monitor um, improvements and implement the plan and its effectiveness. Um, the, within that tiered system, they're also looking at using data-driven and evidence-based interventions. And then within that tiered system, there is something known as positive behavioral interventions and supports, known as PBIS, and those have been established. These PBIS, um, they alter the school environment by improving programming and the procedures within the school that impl impl impact discipline, reinforcement, training, and then the team-based decision-making. Now, when it comes to PBIS, the foundations lie within applied behavior analysis, um, and it's founded within the science of that. And it, this is evidenced by an emphasis that's been placed on using operational definitions of behavior, um, the logic behind selecting interventions that are used to change behavior, and the continuous assessment of the interventions and the student outcomes. The rationale for my study. Um, looking into those Tier 1 interventions um, within the PDIS model, at Tier 1 instructional choice, is one of those interventions that has been established as an effective, low-intensity, and teacher-delivered support. It has, they have been found to reduce challenging behaviors and increase academic, academic engagement in higher quality tasks, thus keeping kids in the classroom um, receiving that instruction. Now, when we're looking at instructional choice, it's important to know that choice involves two parts. Um, the first part of choice is that there's a selection response when multiple selections are available, and that those selections have differential outcomes. And when we talk about choice in that way, um, we talk about concurrent change or concurrent change schedule. And when we talk about concurrent change, there's an initial link and that's the point in which the selection response, where the choice is made. And then the terminal link, which is the response required to acquire the differential outcome or to access the consequence, such as a reinforcement. When looking into concurrent chains or into choice studies, there were four studies that I really focused in on. Um, Ackerland, Brandt, and colleagues did a study that used typically developing, developing preschool students. And through their study, um, preschoolers were given a set of identical flashcards. And in one, within their conditions, the control would result in 
getting just praise for a correct response. A no choice link was established with a set of flashcards in which the correct response requirement um, was the presenter offering one reinforcer. In this case, they were edible reinforcers. And then there was a child choice. And if that initial link was chosen and a correct response was given, the child was presented with five identical reinforcers and they could choose one. So ultimately, the only thing that changed was the um, end consequence or the end reinforcement. And what they found was that in all cases, um, the children in the study preferred the choice condition in which they got to choose their reinforcer. Um, Fennerty and Tiger in 2010, they did a study to look um, and extend the choice. They looked at um, offering a choice of the task versus the choice of the consequence. They also did their study using preschool students. Um, what they looked at was giving um, a, a task choice where there were five tasks which were all identical. Choosing the task in a correct response at that initial link, the terminal link with the correct response would result in one presenter delivered reinforcer. Or they could choose, uh, be given one task without the choice and a correct response would result in their choice of five, one of five identical reinforcers. And then a control in which a worksheet was given just one and no, um, oh, I keep doing that. No, nothing but praise, um, and well praise and one edible. So in this one, the only thing that differed was the choice of the task or the choice of the consequence. And in this case, they found that the children um, valued or preferred the choice of consequence versus being able to choose what task they were doing. Um, then we, I looked at a study by Tiger Hanley and Hernandez from 2006. And this one again was done to look at if they could enhance choice by increasing the number of reinforcers in the array. The array. Um, Tiger Hanley and Hernandez followed a very similar procedure and methodology um, of the previous studies, and except for in this time, they increased the number of reinforcers in the array to see if they could change the value of that reinforcer. And what they found in the result of that is the more reinforcers presented in the array, the more preferred that choice or that initial link was. They also furthered that study to look at the increase, to see if increasing the response requirement at the terminal link would alter or affect any of the choice conditions. And in that case, excuse me, in that case, they found that children in their study would continue to choose to do more response requirements to access or to have choice of their reinforcer at the terminal link until they hit their breakpoint or their switch point in which they went back to the experimenter choice and they would do less response for an experimenter provided reinforcer. Finally, I looked at a study by Tucson, Kodak, and Vlad Valescu of, in 2016. And what they set out to look at is does offering instructional choice affect the rate of skill acquisition? And they also used preschool students. And what they did is they just looked to see, um, following a very similar study um, procedure as the other studies that I just mentioned, they looked to see if setting a criterion of having two consecutive sessions um, at 90% um, of correct response requirements would, before getting reinforcer, would increase the rate of their skill acquisition. And in doing so, they did find that, it, that the children's skill acquisition did increase when the choice of their reinforcer at the terminal link um, was given. So in looking at all of those studies, I set out to kind of combine components of those 
And the purpose of the study that I'd like to conduct is to expand on that previous research to examine the differential effects on skill acquisition by utilizing that instructional choice and using that concurrent schedule of reinforcement. My methods for doing this, um, the participants I'd like to use are 25 third grade students attending public school in a Midwestern state in the United States. Um, the participants will be in an inclusive general education classroom and attendance in the classroom is five days per week. Within the class there are 14 boys and 11 girls. All 25 of the participants receive 60 minutes of um, uninterrupted math instruction during the day, five days per week. And of the 25, nine participants receive Title I support in the academic area of math, which means they receive an additional 30 minutes of math instruction five days per week. Um, this is going to take place um, in a general education classroom between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. There will be one session conducted per day, and each session should take approximately 10 minutes from start to finish. Um, before starting, I will do a preference assessment of color with the participants using um, just a survey with physical papers to represent the colors of white, pink, yellow, blue, salmon, purple, and green. And I'm going to ask the students to rate the colors on a Likert scale from one to four. One meaning that they hate that color and four meaning that they love that color. Um, in doing that, I'm going to analyze the results and take a look, and this is an example of some anticipated results. And in choosing three least preferred colors, salmon, um, which nobody chose as their most favorite color, white and, and yellow as the least preferred colors to prevent any color bias throughout the study. The materials used for my study, um, I'm going to use identical worksheets of mixed multiplication and division equations that are going to be presented in random order. Each of the worksheets are going to be color coded using the least preferred colors to prevent that color bias. Um, the difficulty is going to be equally balanced and the equations are going to be using multiples of 4, 6, 7, and 8 because those are, are and have been identified as the most challenging um, multiplication division multiples within the classroom. This is just an example of two of the randomized worksheets. Um, this would be the control worksheet and this would be the no choice here. They're not color coded yet. They would be um, to just identify what condition they're in. Again, same exact problems, just mixed up. Um, also, prior to doing the study, I would do a preference assessment on reinforcers. We already have a token economy within the classroom. And taking a look at some of the items on the token economy, um, some reinforcers, gumballs, pixie sticks, pencil, ten, to ten dojo points towards our classroom economy, five minutes of free time on the Chromebook, being read, uh, having the opportunity to read to the class, um, a candy from the candy box or a prize from a prize box, and again, using that Likert scale from one to four, one being I don't want that, and for being I really want that. Using those results, um, I'm gonna take a look at what is, or what I anticipate to be the most preferred. In this case, some anticipated results being 10 dojo points, a pencil, a pixie stick, a gumball, and five minutes on the Chromebook. That Those five top reinforcers would be the reinforcers put into the array for my um, terminal link in the choice condition. Um, as we're going through and I'm collecting data, my primary measure is going to be on skill acquisition of the multiplication and division fluency. I'm going to be looking at the average class percentage correct. I'm going to be looking for the number of students that are reaching 100% mastery. And I'm going to keep and take data on what initial link selection um, kids are most preferring when the concurrent choice option comes up. This is an example of what the data sheet looks like. There, um, the participants are number coded. The session goes along the top. There's a spot to indicate what initial link has been selected. Um, and then A would be written if it's the no choice condition. 
a B for the child choice or a C for concurrent, concurrent choice. And then the um, data will be represented as the percent correct for each student. And then the total number of kids meeting 100% mastery and then the class mean will also be collected. So the procedure on a daily basis, um, beforehand conditioning sessions will be used using um, different multiples, one, two, five, and 10, just to let kids experience the different conditions using multiples that I know are typically easier and they'll have some success with. I'm gonna keep the mastery criterion for both the conditioning and the study at 100% which means they're gonna to have to get 25 out of 25 equations correct. Um, the students are gonna be given 225 seconds to complete those equations. Um, and I got this number based on the standard measure of what's considered fluency, which is three seconds per equation. And if you take the 25 equations and you say three seconds for each, that's 175 seconds. And for this study, because of the difficulty, um, I've decided to take that number and triple it, so 175 seconds times three gave me 225 seconds. So that's the amount of time they'll be allotted to solve those equations. Now, to determine the initial and um, terminal link conditions, there will be three. There's gonna be child choice, no choice, and control. The child choice, um, the discriminative stimulus for this is gonna be that the worksheet is on that salmon colored worksheet, um, the paper, because it's the least preferred. And a correct response in the terminal link during the child choice will result in um, teacher praise, and then the child gets to select the reinforcer from that array of the highly preferred reinforcers. The no choice is going to be used, um, the discriminative stimulus on the yellow worksheet. That's going to signal that the correct response requirement of 100% correct will result in teacher praise and the teacher selecting one of those five reinforcers and just presenting it. And then there will be a control condition in that um, SD will be on, the worksheet will be on white paper. And a correct response during that condition is just gonna be teacher praise. Now, I'm gonna use an alternating treatment design to randomize the sessions. I'm going to roll the die that day. And if I roll a one, we're gonna do control. Rolling a two is gonna be no choice condition. A three, the child choice. And then the four is gonna be the concurrent choice. And that's where the child is gonna select the initial link. So during the concurrent choice, all three, in this case, the white, yellow, and salmon worksheets will be presented, and I will just say, pick one. The children will then just each select the one that they most prefer, and then everything will go on as planned, and data will be collected to see which of those links is uh, most preferred or uh, chosen more often. If a five or six is rolled, I'm just going to roll again until one through four has been rolled. Um, when we get started, it's going to look like this. We're going to roll the dice to assign the initial link. The students are going to use privacy folders at their tables to prevent any wandering eyes from looking at each other. They will need to put their name and date on their paper, and then they will hold up their pencil in the air to signal that they're ready to begin. And that way I'll be able to scan the room to see that we're all ready before the timer begins. Um, when all the pencils are in the air, I'm going to just, the teacher will say, begin and I'm gonna start a timer. The students will have that 225 seconds to work. When the timer ends, the participants will take their folders and put them on top of their papers. That will allow me a quick visual check that nobody is continuing to work beyond the time limit. The worksheets are gonna be collected and corrected, and the terminal link consequences are gonna be carried out for those reaching the mastery criterion of 100%. Um, throughout this study, I'm also going to be looking at fluency probes, and this is going to be, I'm going to do the study with the initial link and the concurrent schedule at the beginning part of math. We're going to do our normal math instruction, and at the end of our math um, instruction, we're going to do a fluency probe. And these are going to be done daily, and these are going to be used to assess skill acquisition on just one specific multiple at a time. 
These probes are going to contain only 20 equations. There will be all multiplication or all division. And there will be 60 seconds. Again, that 3 seconds per equation. So 20 equations times 3 seconds. And the mastery criterion is still the same at 100% within that allotted time. These are just some examples of what the probes. So this would be one. These are all multiples of four. This would be one all multiples of six for multiplication. And this is an example of a division, all multiples of seven. Collection for the data on the probes. I will do individual sheets for each student. Record the date, the multiple. I'll circle is it multiplication or division. What multiple is it? What is their score in percent? And what was the time it took to complete? Also, throughout the study or at the end of the study, I'm going to do social validity with both students and the paraprofessionals in the room. Using um, a Likert scale, the students and the paraprofessionals will be asked to um, take a look at some statements like, I liked the opportunity to make choices. And they can say, I strongly disagree all the way to I strongly agree. And then a few extra questions for the paraprofessionals to see how they felt um, it ran from a different perspective as well as someone who is there to help out their student. Um, anticipated results. This is an example graph of some anticipated results showing the average class percent correct of the skill acquisition during um, this study. And just taking a look visually at it, we can see the concurrent choice schedule is marked with the X. I anticipate to see rapid um, increase in the level and the trend of that, as well as looking at, I'm predicting that the control praise only with no reinforcer is going to have more of a little effect on skill acquisition. Also taking data on the initial link selection taking a look if the four was rolled and the kids get to choose. I anticipate that the control will not be picked often. The no choice where the teacher presented reinforcer will happen from time to time, but mostly I'm going to anticipate that the kids are going to pick the condition or the initial link in which they get to choose from the reinforcers. I am going to be looking at uh, and keeping track of on, at each session how many students are reaching mastery. And I expect as the sessions and the study goes on that I'm going to see a great number of students increasing that level of mastery. I'm also going to take a look at individual student results for um, selected students. And these are just examples of the individual data percent correct for a student uh, hypothetical loop, looking at the different scores and the variability from the different um, conditions, and then also looking at skill acquisition on fluency probes and looking at the percent correct and the amount of time I'm anticipating. The percent correct is going to increase and the amount of time should decrease. Um, again, some predicted results for validity. I'm anticipating some pretty high scores from the students. Um, knowing that choice is a reinforcer, I'm predicting they are going to answer highly and that they agree in many other things, as well as with my paraprofessionals. Um, any questions? I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to consider my thesis proposal, and let me know if you have any suggestions for revision.